This is a short video on disorders of sexual development. We have here the Quigley scale of the genitals, which kind of shows at one end the normal male genitalia and at the other end the normal female genitalia and all the kind of the, the spectrum of ambiguous genitalia in between. In this video, we're going to be talking about congenital disorders affecting traits of the gender, the genitalia, and reproductive health in general. So let's begin with McCune Albright syndrome. McCune-Albright syndrome is a genetic disorder causing precocious puberty. That means puberty happening earlier, much earlier than it should, probably about six to seven years old as opposed to the normal 12 years of age. Pathophysiology here is a defect in the G3-alpha subunit protein. Now, this is a, a G-coupled protein receptor, and if you have a defect here, it's going to be constitutively active. So you're going to constantly be activating the G-protein-coupled receptor, which is a signaling pathway. This disease kind of spreads around the body in a chimeric fashion, so it's possible to have several and various tissues affected. So more than one tissue can be affected, more than one organ system, and this can vary from patient to patient. This, it's important to note that this is a gonadotropin-independent process. So because it's a problem with the signaling pathway inside the target cell, it's gonadotropin-independent. So regardless of if you decrease GnRH or if FSH and LH are low, this is still going to happen because it's a problem with the signaling pathway. Clinically, we see early breast development and early puberty. We can also see hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, cafe au lait spots with a coast of main border. And that's kind of what you see in these pictures here. You see cafe au lait spots or darker pigmentations of the skin that kind of end around the midline, the coast of main border, as they're called. You treat these with aromatase inhibitors to limit the effects of estrogen, which is what caused the early breast development and the early puberty. So treat with aromatase inhibitors. Next is Turner's syndrome. This is a genetic disorder of delayed puberty and no periods. No periods is also called primary amenorrhea, whenever you've never had a period. This is a result of ovarian failure, and you get streak gonads. On physical exam, these patients have short stature. They have a shield chest with widely spaced nipples. They have a webbed neck and a prepubertal vagina, uterus, and cervix. Lab tests show high FSH, high LH, and low estradiol. You can kind of think of it as the body's trying to stimulate the production of more estrogen with the high LH and high FSH, but estrogen is still low. Karyotype here is 45XO, so it's a female that's missing an X chromosome. Associated problems are renal problems, autoimmune problems like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and cardiac problems, including aortic coarctation, aortic aneurysm, mitral valve prolapse, and bicuspid aortic valve. Treatment is growth hormone, hormone replacement, and egg donation for childbirth. Although this egg donation for childbirth does have some significant risks, and not all patients with Turner syndrome will be able to give birth. Next is Klinefelder syndrome. This is a genetic disorder offending affecting the testicles. You have testicular atrophy, which causes dysfunction of the Leydig cells and the seminiferous tubules in the testicles. Clinically, these patients are tall. They have gynecomastia. They have a female hair distribution, which often means no hair on the chest or on the trunk, often no hair on the face as well. They have long extremities and sometimes developmental delays. Lab results show high LH, high FSH, low testosterone, that's the main problem, uh, testicular atrophy means low testosterone. They have increased estrogen and increased inhibin B. Karyotype here is 47XXY. It's a male with an extra X chromosome. Next is androgen insensitivity syndrome. This disease is also known as testicular feminization. It's caused by an inactivating mutation in the androgen receptor gene in the end organs. So the end organs cannot respond to testosterone, cannot respond to androgens. This is essentially when you have a male genotype, you're 46XY, but you appear as a female. It's a female phenotype. And you, you appear normal or your, your development is normal until you reach puberty. You develop as a normal female until puberty where you don't have your periods. And that's because on the inside you have male genitalia. So you have a short vagina with little sexual hair. You have no cervix and no uterus because the testes produce anti-malarian hormone during development. So your internal genitalia are male, uh, but you do have a short vagina on the outside because the lower part of the vagina is not formed from the same parts as the cervix and the uterus. Lab tests here show high 
uh, ratio of LH to FSH, although FSH and LH can be within normal limits. There is higher LH, and that makes sense because your testosterone is very high and your body wants to continue to stimulate more testosterone because it's insensitive to it, although LH and FSH can be within normal limits. Estrogen is usually normal here too. And as you can see, these people look like normal phenotypic females. They just do not have the internal organs. They do not have the cervix or the uterus. You can treat these with HRT, hormone replacement therapy. You can also usually remove the testicles to prevent risks of cancer. The testicles are usually located in the labia majora in these patients. You can also expand the vagina to improve sexual life. Next disease is 5-alpha reductase deficiency. This is an enzyme, 5-alpha reductase, that converts testosterone to the more potent dihydrotestosterone, as you can see in that diagram on the bottom. This is a genetic or disorder that affects genetic males. The internal genitalia here are male, although you do have ambiguous external genitalia until puberty. At puberty, at around 12 years old, you have a sudden increase in testosterone, which causes sudden testicular enlargement. Uh, the phallus or the clitoris is enlarged. You have a deepening of voice and you also have increased muscle mass. This is also known as penis at 12 syndrome because you have ambiguous gen external genitalia until the phallus or clitoris enlarges at puberty. So at 12 years old, you kind of sprout your penis and that's characteristic of 5-alpha reductase deficiency. Lab tests here show high testosterone, high testosterone to DHT ratio, which makes sense because you have low DHT because you can't produce it, and you have a normal male 46XY karyotype. Lastly is Kalman syndrome. This is caused by impaired migration of neurons. That's something that's helpful to associate with Kalman. So there's a disorder in a protein called anosmin-1, and because of that, you have impaired migration of neurons. So what does impaired migration of neurons do? First, your GnRH secreting neurons in the hypothalamus do not migrate, so you have low GnRH. Secondly, your olfactory neurons, the olfactory bulbs, do not migrate, so you have anosmia. You have decreased or no ability to smell. This is an example of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Hypogonadotropic because GnRH is deficient. You have no GnRH being secreted. Clinically, you see delayed puberty, you see anosmia, as we discussed, you see amenorrhea in females, and low sperm count in males. Lab tests here show low GnRH, low FSH, low LH, and low estrogen, and those are all downstream of GnRH, which makes sense. Treat here with hormone replacement therapy for most of the symptoms. If you want to induce fertility, you can try recombinant FSH. That's it for this video of genetic disorders involving sexuality and gender. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.